you acknowledged uh, keeping your emotions in check. So I guess in a tense game like this, uh, tense environment, I guess where does your mind, your competitiveness go mm -hmm. when, you know, occasionally teammates, you know, kind of have to come in and, and redirect you away from the refs? <sighs> well, I didn't think they were going to give me a technical at any point tonight. Um, I would have been really sad for people in Washington, D.C. I didn't want to do that. I, I tried my best. Um. Indiana Fever rookie Caitlin Clark had a historic start to her professional career, setting all kinds of records on and off the court. But among her incredible achievements, there were also some slightly more worrisome stats worth tracking for her as well. While she set the record for the most assists in a single season, she also was nearly suspended for getting whistled on too many technical fouls. Clark was among the WNBA leaders with six technicals in 2024. According to league rules, if she had recorded one more, she would have received a one-game suspension. But because the technical foul count recycles at the end of the regular season and the Fever have just one more game this year, it is unlikely that Clark will face that discipline. Clark noted that her teammates, including Ilya Boston, do a really job of turning her away from the refs to prevent her from arguing with them. She said, But I don't want to be getting technicals at all, so. And my mom doesn't want that for me either, and I, won't, I don't want to pay any more fines, so <laughs> I'm done with that. Some of the technical fouls called on Clark were plainly ridiculous. Hopefully we can see her express some emotion in the postseason without a needless whistle from the referees. That will make the games better, and it will make her mother, and Nidzi Clark, very happy as well. Clark circling her way through, finds an opening and banks it home. Indiana will reset. Clark, fire away. You bet. Come on. Caitlin Clark is proving that being a rookie in the WNBA doesn't mean you can't handle the heat. During a nail-biting showdown against the Dallas Wings, she not only had to sharpen her shooting skills, but also keep her cool under pressure. One more technical foul, and she'd be sitting out the crucial game against the Mystics. Spoiler alert, she nailed it leading her team to a thrilling 110-109 victory thanks to the support of her teammate Alia Boston and coach Christy Sides. Clark is showing us all what true teamwork looks like. In the post-game press conference, Clark couldn't help but chuckle about how Aaliyah had to play the role of her babysitter. It's loving, obviously, the scoring. Yeah, is that it was, accurate? Yeah, it was definitely fun, and obviously I've gone against JC for quite a while now in my career. Every year I was at Iowa, she... She was really good at Ohio State, so I'm um, pretty familiar with her game and, and what she's about, and I think she's had a really good year um, for the Wings. And, you know, she just, like, kind of takes what they give you. She's always consistent. She's always going to step up to the plate and guard whoever she needs to guard, and, um, you know, happy for her. But, um, yeah, I thought the game was really fun. Obviously, once we got it to eight, I wish we could have kept – kept that a little bit better. Um, we didn't execute really in the half court as well. And when they started throwing some traps at us, we didn't respond to it great. So um, I think just executing that last minute and a half a little bit better where we don't have to like just go to the free throw line and make a bunch of free throws. I thought we were great at that. Um, but you want to get to the point where you don't have to rely on that too. So um, I definitely love this type of game. Very high scoring, but our defense can be a lot better. She clearly enjoys the competitive aspect of the game and respects her opponent's skills, but she's also critical of her team's execution and defensive play. Her balanced approach highlights her commitment to both celebrating victories and seeking continuous improvement. It's in a really tough spot, and I thought that three she made there in the fourth quarter was huge for us. And we could have executed a little bit better down the stretch, but um, I think we just really, really read and understand each other a lot better from where we were at the beginning of the season. Like... The amount of backdoor cuts that girl has got just because we make eye contact and she knows to go back door is it's incredible. Like that play we ran to start the the third quarter, like I wasn't involved in it. I wasn't at the beginning, but like we ran that play a million times and it just made me laugh because like she's so fast that she gets open every single time. So um, I'm really happy for her and, and proud of her. She definitely deserves this. Caitlin's response shows a lot of respect. Even though she wasn't directly involved in the play, her admiration for Kelsey's speed and skill shines through. It's clear that Caitlin values teamwork and is genuinely pleased with Kelsey's success. Her positive attitude and pride in her teammates' achievement reflect a strong team spirit and support. Um, 
you get the rookie record, you get a career high. It's a mm -hmm. tense game uh, from start to finish. Friday, you acknowledged uh, keeping your emotions in check. So I guess in a tense game like this, uh, tense environment, I guess where does your mind, your competitiveness go mm -hmm. when, you know, occasionally teammates, you know, kind of have to come in and, and redirect you away from the refs? <sighs> Well, I didn't think they were going to give me a technical at any point tonight. Um, I would have been really sad for people in Washington, D.C. I didn't want to do that. I, I tried my best. Um, um, but my teammates do a really good job of that. They think I'm funny. They think it's funny. So, And then Aaliyah is the one that ends up with a technical. That's the best part about it all. Like <laughs> She's the one babysitting me, and then somehow she ends up with a technical. And she didn't really do anything. She was just standing there. So that's what was funny to me. Caitlin's response shows her playful side and humor about the technical foul. She didn't expect to get one herself. It's amusing to her that Aaliyah, who wasn't involved, did. This wasn't just another game. It was a test of mental fortitude. Clark faced the Dallas Wings in an intense physical battle. And when tensions flared and she was called for an offensive foul, Aaliyah sprang into action, pulling her away from the officials and advocating for her. Even Coach Christie had her back, showing just how much support Clark has from her team. Now that the technical foul pressure is off her shoulders, Clark can focus on what she does best, scoring. Um, but uh, I, think, I think I did a better job. I still thought there was like a couple moments there where I could have been a little bit better. Um, but now it's, it's basically over. I don't have to worry about that anymore, but I don't want to be getting technicals at all. So... <laughs> And my mom doesn't want that for me either. And I, won't, I don't want to pay any more fines. So <laughs> I'm done with that. Caitlin acknowledges she could have handled some moments better, but shows a genuine desire to avoid future technical fouls, both to please her mom and avoid fines. Her lighthearted yet honest take on the situation reflects her maturity and focus on improving her game while keeping things in perspective. Did she show up? In what can only be described as a masterclass performance, Clark erupted for 35 points and dished out 8 assists, shooting 10 of 22 from the field and an impressive 6 of 14 from beyond the arc. This was a welcome return to form after a rough patch against the Las Vegas Aces where she struggled to find her rhythm, hitting only 3 of her 18 three-point attempts. But with this game behind her, Clark is heading into the playoffs with newfound energy and determination. Setting records has become second nature for Clark, and she's done it again. With her latest scoring spree, she has officially surpassed Simone Augustus's previous rookie record of 744 points, racking up a jaw-dropping 761 points in her debut season alone. Averaging 19.1 points and 8.4 assists, she has yet to miss a game. Now that the worry about technical fouls is behind her, all eyes will be on her performance in the Fever's final regular season game against the Mystics. Also, let's note her great college career, now with two ESPYs. Clark's exceptional year was recognized when she was named Best College Athlete in Women's Sports. What's more, she broke the NCAA scoring record, surpassing Pete Maravich's mark with 3,951 points in just four years at Iowa. To top it all off, she became the first woman to win the ESPY for Best Record-Breaking Performance, a category that has been around since 2001. Yes, she was nominated for Best Woman Athlete, but that honor went to Aja Wilson of the Las Vegas Aces. No worries. Clark's already rewriting the record books, and her journey is just getting started. As Caitlin Clark looks ahead to the playoffs, she carries with her not just a record-breaking season, but also the unwavering support of her teammates and the lessons learned from navigating the ups and downs of her rookie year. With her eyes set on the championship, one thing is clear. Clark is not just here to play. She's here to dominate. And trust me, the league better watch out. This rookie is only getting warmed up. She couldn't play. I must admit, I lost a little respect for Caitlin Clark. I thought she was it. Cheryl Swoops was uh, discussing the Indiana Fever on a podcast. Okay. And she was like, in the Fever, they've just been tremendous. And she started naming players. And she named like every player except Caitlin Clark. Okay. She wouldn't, okay. She wouldn't mention her name. Yeah. It would true hater. Caitlin Clark has been unstoppable after setting another record on September 14th. And it's incredible to see how some people are reacting. They're just ridiculous. Seriously, why are so many jealous players and commentators struggling with her success? Every time someone criticizes her, they seem more desperate. 
Why is it so difficult to admit that she's dominating the league, setting records, and making everyone else look like beginners? Here you go, the Caitlin Clark. She is bringing all this revenue into the league. And then what's this? Petty jealousy. People smashing her, you know, with these hard fouls. People on the bench. Angel Reese jumps up, cheering like, can you imagine? LeBron James jumped up. It, it, it is like so classless. Caitlin Clark doesn't just rise above the criticism. She demolishes it. All these so-called critics are only showing one thing. They can't keep up. While she's out there making history, they're busy making excuses. It's honestly embarrassing for them. The more they talk, the more they reveal themselves as nothing but jealous, irrelevant background noise. Take Molly Karam from ESPN, for instance. She couldn't stand seeing Caitlin Clark get the spotlight she deserves. Instead, she had to jump in, insisting that other players should get the same praise and attention, regardless of their performance. It was just she was receiving all the accolades, the praise for everything that was happening in the WNBA, and she hadn't even played a game yet. So people were just saying, respect who did it before, respect the other stars. Like, really? You're actually upset that the most dominant player in the game is getting all the hype? Molly's out here throwing shade, claiming Clark hasn't even played a game yet, as if that changes how incredible Clark is on the court. She couldn't play. Molly, sweetheart, this isn't a charity. The spotlight goes to the best, and right now, that's Clark. She's breaking records and dominating the court, and yes, she's earned the praise. But here comes Molly, acting like Clark's success is an injustice to the rest of the league. Stephen A. Smith even had to call her out on it. But Molly? She just can't handle the truth. Honestly, Molly, maybe focus less on spreading the praise and more on accepting that Caitlin Clark is simply that good. And, and, and Molly, I'm disappointed in you. I'm just, uh, because women, this first, what happened? We, 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 the, the, the kind of heat that me and Shannon have had to take. Molly, what's up? And of course, Skip Bayless had to say something. I must admit, I lost a little respect for Caitlin Clark. I thought she was it. Seriously? As if anyone asked for your suggestion in the first place. The world is out here celebrating Clark for her incredible skills, and uh. Skip Bayless just has to slide in with his outdated, unsolicited hot takes. It's almost like he's trying to go against the grain just to stay relevant. Let's be real, Skip. You're just one of those few critics who can't handle Clark's success. She's breaking records and redefining the game while you're over there nitpicking, pretending your opinion matters. Sorry, but nobody's losing sleep over what you think of Clark. She's got a league full of fans and players who respect her, and you're just throwing shade from the sidelines. Skip Bayless, that is not the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so I help you God. So I don't mean to go against you or God himself. What Skip is either wrong about or has forgotten, honchos at ESPN were not happy. Moving on to a legend, yet even legends aren't exempt from poor judgments. Cheryl Swoops made headlines by criticizing Clark's game, suggesting her style wouldn't survive in the WNBA. Will Caitlin Clark come into the WNBA and do what she's doing right now? Immediately? Absolutely not. Not gonna happen. Not going to happen. Every time Swoops criticized Clark, she just went out and broke another record, making those comments look as outdated as dial-up internet. It's like Clark's whole goal has been to prove Swoops wrong, and she's doing it perfectly. And if Swoops' criticism wasn't enough, let's talk about Angel Reese. Her attitude towards Clark is just pure pettiness. Remember when she took a cheap shot at Clark's head and mocked her, then didn't even show any remorse? Oh, I was waiting. How long were you sitting I tell you, I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> Me? At what point were you waiting to pull out this? Man. This is kind of a Caitlyn Clark. Hey, Caitlyn Clark is a hell of a Incredible. player. Incredible. Player, for sure. But I don't take disrespect lightly. And she disrespected Alexis and my girls. South Carolina, they still my SEC girls, too. But y'all not going to disrespect them either. So I had, I, I wanted to pick her pocket, but I, I had a moment at the end of the game, and that was just, I was in my bag. I was in my moment. Yeah. Seriously, what was that? The move wasn't just dirty. It was desperate. Reese has been a textbook example of unsportsmanlike behavior, shoving, trash talking, and trying to disrupt Clark's game. And remember when Chennedy Carter pushed Clark on the court and Reese clapped like it was a huge win? Very mature, Angel. Now let's talk about Carter. Her actions are all about shoves, taunts, and disrespect, as if she's on a mission to make Clark's life hard. Jealousy doesn't suit anyone, 
and Carter's made it her whole persona. Clark, though, doesn't even blink. Hitting a shot, then heading over to Clark and shoulder checking her. The refs called it a common foul, but the league yesterday upgraded the call to a flagrant foul. So after all the trash talk from critics and the dirty fouls she's faced, what does Caitlin Clark do? She breaks Alyssa Thomas's single season assist record on September 14th, 2024, with a total of 321 assists, leaving the previous record of 316 in the dust. And it wasn't just one impressive stat. She also scored 18 points, grabbed eight rebounds, and made nine assists in that same game against the Las Vegas Aces. Honestly, what can't this woman do? She's excelling in every area of the game while her critics are left regretting every bad thing they've said about her. Caitlin Clark deserves love, not just respect, love for the fact that she spoke out and she gave a voice to who you, Eminem, and so many others. Caitlin Clark faces off against the Phoenix Mercury and puts up 32 points with 10 assists. On August 21st, 2024, like it's no big deal. She's just out here showing everyone how it's done while the Mercury are probably questioning their fate. The whole game was a masterclass in performing under pressure. Plus, she set a new record for the most consecutive games with 30 or more points, beating Maya Moore's record, just breaking Legends records like it's her hobby. Fast forward to September 3, 2024, and Clark goes off again against the Seattle Storm, scoring 28 points and making 12 assists. And that win? It wasn't just any win, it secured a playoff spot for the sky. Caitlin carried her team to victory on her own. Go ahead and look. Everywhere you turn, Indiana Fever's breaking records. All Cheryl Swoops did was validate all the speculation. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, Caitlin Clark hits a game-winning shot against the Las Vegas Aces on September 10th, 2024. Let me say that again, a game-winning shot. Not just a clutch play or a nice bucket, but a buzzer beater that kept the Sky's championship hopes alive. Caitlin Clark is practically writing her own Hollywood script, and it feels almost unfair to the rest of the league. If I were her opponent, I'd probably just sit back and watch the show. And we're not finished with the records yet. On September 5th, 2024, Caitlin breaks another milestone. She becomes the fastest player in WNBA history to reach 1,000 career assists in just 75 games. Sue Bird, a legend in her own right, held that record before, but Caitlin breezed past it like it was nothing. Her resume speaks for itself. She just set the record for the most points ever scored. They didn't prop her up just because she was white. Her accolades speak for themselves. And because she's getting endorsements and people are coming to see her, we got this petty jealousness going on and it's really unfortunate. It's no surprise that Caitlin Clark's success is bothering some people. You saw this coming, right? Her incredible talent and fast rise are too much for some WNBA players. The jealousy is clear on the court. Some players are really upset, probably losing sleep because a 22-year-old is outshining them. But jealousy is just part of the game when someone like Clark comes along and changes everything. The hate she's getting is almost expected. From the start, Clark has faced doubts. People didn't think she would last, but every time someone tries to criticize her, she responds with another record-breaking performance. It's like her critics are giving her chances to prove them wrong. And believe me, they are wrong. Clark doesn't let the negativity affect her. The doubters and haters, she ignores them and focuses on her game. And her game speaks for itself. This season, she didn't just play well, she set new records. The milestones people thought were unreachable, she's breaking them easily. It's almost funny that the more she succeeds, the more her rivals try to drag her down. Her greatness seems to be a mirror they can't handle. For every record she sets and every amazing performance, there's someone trying to bring her down. Because the African-American lesbian players were going overboard in their racism and sexism on Caitlin Clark. Lynn and the WNBA had to send different videos at all to the league to get this crap to stop. And the league has, for the most part, stopped. This shocking admission reveals the internal struggles that Caitlin Clark has faced, not just from the fans, but even from within the WNBA itself. 
It's hard to believe, but the racism and sexism directed at her were so rampant that the League had to step in. Well, it seems on some social media channels to have taken a darker turn, a more menacing turn, where race has been introduced into the conversation, where sexuality is sometimes in introduced into the conversation. How do you try and stay ahead of that, uh, try and tamp it down or act as a league when two of your most visible players are involved, n not personally, it would seem, but their fan bases are involved in saying some very uncharitable things. Well, about this was the turning point when the conversations around Caitlin Clark's performance started moving away from basketball and into darker territory. Race and sexuality became the focus of an escalating controversy. The One other. thing that's great about the league right now, we do sit at this intersection of of culture and sport and fashion and music like the WNBA players are really looked at now as cultural icons. True. And when you have that, you oh have boy. a lot of attention on you. There's no more apathy. Everybody cares. It is a little that bird magic moment, if you recall, from 1979 when those two rookies came in from a big college rivalry, one white, one black. And so we have that moment with these two. But While Engelbert tries to frame this as a historic rivalry moment, it's far from that. The issues surrounding Clark and her competitors aren't just about sports. It's a reflection of the larger problems in the league. Well, I mean, might as well. Caitlin Clark, they got their ass beat last night. But, man, Charles Barkley said this a couple days ago that the WNBA could not have effed this up more. Kathy Engelbert, who is the commissioner, is facing criticism from members of the Players Association for not condemning racism and homophobia, which was, of course, and inevitably tied back to Caitlin Clark. Barkley lays it all out. This was a failure on multiple levels, and now Clark is at the center of it all. The league's inability to handle these tensions has left everyone watching. You answered them in private. Awful announcing said her response was not only lackluster. Oh, really? It lacked of any substance. Well, so what? She's right. This is months ago, you idiots, an awful announcing. What are you talking about? Engelbert's word salad reply. Rem Even media outlets are calling out the league's inability to tackle these issues head on. Caitlin Clark may be a top performer, but the WNBA's handling of the controversy surrounding her is far from winning any accolades. The relationships I create here are my legacy. Caitlin Clark quite clearly announced back in Iowa just what she thought mattered the most to her. And now, as she continues to thrill the WNBA crowd with her record-breaking displays, she stands by her words. When the generational talent was drafted as the first overall pick this year, she was not the only one joining the league after shining for the Hawkeyes. Kate Martin was another Iowa alum who entered the big stage, joining the Las Vegas Aces. As their third encounter comes close, Clark is ready to host her former teammate just as nicely. In her recent media availability, the Fever Guard talked about welcoming Kate Martin to Indianapolis. She said, It's definitely pretty weird to us like we were teammates for four years. We got very used to that and now going against. So then you know, like, you love it, you joke about it, but, like, at the same time, it just takes some getting used to. I know a lot of our coaches will be here on the same night. Looks like a fun thing for all of them to be able to do, too and sharing that memory and that joy with us. But I'm just super proud of her and happy for her. The 22-year-old guard also hinted towards her former Iowa head coach, Lisa Bluter, making an attendance when Fever will lock horns with the Aces on Wednesday. Both of the WNBA rookies played four years together with Bluter at the helm and led the Hawkeyes to back-to-back -back NCAA finals. When the duo bid adieu to their alma mater, the 63-year-old also decided to step down from the coaching role. While Caitlin Clark has definitely been the talk of the town with her exceptional rookie season, her best friend Martin is yet to have a firm grip with aces. Nevertheless, she has always found her college best friend acknowledging her and their friendship. The friendship between the opponent rookies, back in May, the former college teammates faced for the very first time in W. While the excitement among enthusiasts was obvious, Clark only made the matchup even more interesting when she opened up on her bond with the Aces rookie.
Kate is obviously one of my best friends, somebody that was with me all four years at Iowa. I was the person that kind of begged her to come back for her sixth year, said the fever number 22. After taking a red shirt year and benefiting from the NCAA's COVID-19 eligibility extension, Martin announced in February 2023 that she would be returning for a sixth and final season with the Hawkeyes. She, along with Clark, led the team to the finals, but could not sweep the championship after falling to the South Carolina Gamecocks. Caitlin isn't much of a defender either. Two-thirds of the way through the year, it was clear. She was on an all-time record turnover pace. And for two-thirds of the year, Caitlin's three-point shooting ranked near the bottom of the league in percentage. I still get frustrated because she won't shoot enough in fourth quarters because she defers to her vets. Angel Reese is actually a poor defender. Angel's team has now fallen to 11 and 22. So she isn't having nearly, nearly the impact that Caitlin is having on her team. Angel Reese is better than Caitlin Clark, is saying Rodman was better than Michael Jordan. The truth is, Angel's a poor shooter of the basketball. I, I don't know any other way to say it. She's just a poor shooter. Skip didn't hold back when it came to discussing two of the WNBA's most talked about rookies, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Let's see how Skip absolutely destroyed these young stars. Caitlin isn't much of a defender either, though she can and she will steal the basketball. She's 15th in the WNBA in steals. First up, let's talk about Caitlin Clark. Now, we all know she's been making waves in the league, but Skip's not buying all the hype. He starts off by dropping this bomb. Caitlin isn't much of a defender either. Ouch. That's gotta hurt for all the Clark fans out there. But wait, there's more. Two-thirds of the way through the year, it was clear. She was on an all-time record turnover pace, the likes of which I have never witnessed. It's almost like she was trying to turn the basketball over. Skip doesn't stop there. He goes on to absolutely roast Clark's ball handling skills. According to Skip, two-thirds of the way through the year, it was clear she was on an all-time record turnover pace. An all-time record? That's not the kind of history you want to be making in your rookie year, Caitlin. Caitlin's three-point shooting ranked near the bottom of the league in percentage. Yet, you're right, the truth is. But hold on to your seats, folks, because Skip's just warming up. He then takes aim at Clark's shooting, saying, For two-thirds of the year, Caitlin's three-point shooting ranked near the bottom of the league in percentage. Near the bottom of the league? That's not what you expect from someone who's supposed to be a sharpshooter. I still get frustrated because she won't shoot enough in fourth quarters because she defers to her vets. She's got horrendous pressure on her. And just when you think Skip's done with Clark, he delivers this final blow. I still get frustrated because she won't shoot enough in fourth quarters because she defers to her vets. Looks like Skip thinks Clark needs to step up and take charge in crunch time. No mercy from Bayless today. Now let's turn our attention to Angel Reese. If you thought Skip was harsh on Clark, wait till you hear what he had to say about Reese. Angel Reese is actually a poor defender, Brittany. Right out of the gate, Skip drops this bombshell. Angel Reese is actually a poor defender. Wow. For someone who's known for her physical presence on the court, that's a pretty damning assessment from Skip. Angel's team has now fallen to 11 and 22. So she isn't having nearly, nearly the impact that Caitlin is having on her team. But Skip's just getting started. He goes on to question Reese's impact on her team, stating, Angel's team has now fallen to 11 and 22, so she isn't having nearly, nearly the impact that Caitlin is having on her team. Ouch. Skip's basically saying Reese isn't living up to the hype and isn't making her team better. That's got a sting. Angel Reese is better than Caitlin Clark, is saying Rodman was better than Michael Jordan, or Ben Wallace was better than Kobe. And if you thought that was harsh, wait till you hear this. Skip actually compares the idea of Reese being better than Clark to saying Rodman was better than Michael Jordan. Talk about a brutal analogy. Skip's basically saying anyone who thinks Reese is better than Clark is out of their mind. Angel's a poor shooter of the basketball. 
I, I don't know any other way to say it. She's just a poor shooter. She's now 38% from the floor, not from three. She's two of 12 from three. That's 17%. But the knockout punch comes when Skip talks about Reese's shooting. He doesn't mince words here, folks. Skip straight up says, the truth is and was a poor shooter of the basketball. I, I don't know any other way to say it. She's just a poor shooter. No sugarcoating there. Skip's calling it like he sees it, and he sees Reese as a liability on offense. Now, you might be thinking, wow, Skip really went in on these two, and you'd be right. But here's where things get interesting. Despite all these criticisms, Skip actually ends up praising Clark quite a bit throughout the rest of the segment. He calls her a once-a-generation passer, and even suggests she could be pushing for MVP. So what's the deal? Is Skip playing both sides? Or is he just being brutally honest about both the strengths and weaknesses of these young stars? One thing's for sure. Skip Bayless knows how to stir up controversy. By pointing out these flaws in Clark and Reese's games, he's guaranteed to get people talking. And isn't that what sports media is all about? But let's take a step back for a moment. Are Skip's criticisms fair? Is he being too harsh on these rookies who are still finding their footing in the league? Or is this tough love exactly what they need to hear to improve their games? It's worth noting that both Clark and Reese have had incredible success in their college careers. They're adjusting to a new level of play, facing the best of the best night in and night out. Growing pains are to be expected, but in the high-stakes world of professional sports, you're only as good as your last game. Skip's comments raise some interesting questions about expectations in the WNBA. Are we putting too much pressure on these young stars to be perfect right out of the gate? Or is this level of scrutiny just part of being a high-profile athlete? One thing's for certain. Both Clark and Reese have shown flashes of brilliance in their rookie seasons. They've also both shown areas where they need to improve. That's the nature of the game. Even the greatest players have aspects of their game they need to work on. So, what do you think? Did Skip Bayless go too far in his criticisms? Or is he just doing his job by providing honest, unfiltered analysis? Are Clark and Reese getting a raw deal? Or do they need to step up their games? Whatever your opinion, one thing's for sure. The WNBA is more exciting than ever with young talents like Clark and Reese in the league. And as long as there are players making waves, you can bet Skip Bayless will be there with his hot takes, ready to stir the pot and keep us all talking. Caitlin Clark's second triple-double also makes her the third player in WNBA history to finish a game with 20-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, 10-plus assists, 3-plus STL. This tweet alone shows how Caitlin Clark continues to make history. In tonight's game, she once again showcased why she's one of the most dynamic rookies the league has ever seen. If an argument for Caitlin Clark as the MVP had to be made, there are undeniable factors supporting it. Indiana Fever has gone from winning a dozen games last season to 18-16, improved to a 500 and are real playoff contenders. Meanwhile, Clark's picking up three-point and assist records as a great passer and helping her team. So when the star rookie recorded her second career triple-double tonight, she aided Aaliyah Boston in making history herself. Not to be underscored, Boston had an impressive outing that puts her in league with WNBA titans like Lisa Leslie and Brittany Griner. Indiana Fever toppled the Los Angeles Sparks 93-86 with Aaliyah Boston recording a monster double-double with 24 points, 14 rebounds, and 4 assists, going 62.5% from the field. She's now only the third player in WNBA history to have multiple games in one regular season with 20-plus points, 14-plus rebounds, 4-plus assists, and 60% field goal percentage. The only others who have accomplished this are Lisa Leslie and the one who Boston recently clashed with, Brittany Griner. Caitlin Clark notched the second triple-double of her career, 24 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds in this game. She's the only rookie to do it twice in the league. She also made four threes and had three steals. She got her first triple-double in July over New York Liberty. Her selfless passing style stood out in this game over the Sparks that a few ex-users compared her to Magic Johnson, the Lakers legend and Sparks co-owner, and it definitely enabled Aaliyah to record her own individual accolade. Or to be fat, Binlay. 
not shooting the three that easily or that comfortably. I don't know if that's comfortable, but it's nice by Caitlin Clark. The buzz and attention surrounding Caitlin Clark's game are unlike anything seen in the league until now. The jersey sales, the sold-out stadiums, the peak viewership, this massive wave of popularity mirrors the excitement that swept through the NBA in the 80s when Michael Jordan became a household name. So WNBA analyst Nancy Lieberman believes that Clark deserves admiration as MJ does as opposed to the lack of recognition or criticism that may come her way. Calling out the critics and haters, Lieberman on the Stephen A. Smith show said, I just don't understand people. Now you have signature shoes for both men and women because of what MJ did and how he and his team constructed business. Caitlin is doing that right now, and she should be supported and not maligned for that. Lieberman's claims about Clark's influence are understandable when we bring Clark's $28 million Nike deal, which is the most lucrative shoe deal in WNBA history. Clark is soon expected to receive her own signature shoe as well. Jordan's wasn't quite hushed itself. Five-year, $2.5 million deal, three times that of any other deal in the league. Thus drawing parallels, Lieberman continues on to say that it is jealousy that is driving the lack of support toward Caitlin Clark as previously observed towards other notable players like Jordan or Tiger Woods. It's not a Caitlin thing. It's a people thing. I mean, people were so jealous of Michael Jordan back in 1984. UNC Chicago Stadium was half empty prior to him arriving. The stadiums were filling up then. TV wanted him and the Bulls on every game, she says. Expanding on her point, Lieberman further exampled Woods as the catalyst to change in golf in terms of purse and TV ratings. All of a sudden, he gets to a certain point in his career and people are jealous and envious, you know, Lieberman notes. But Clark's impact? Within just 20 minutes, fans snapped up Clark's WNBA All-Star jersey in both colors, selling out completely. The Indiana Fever leads the league in attendance, recording a 265% jump from last season with a turn-up number of 503,921 across 31 games. Lieberman's opinions were a continuation of her praise for the rookie from her most recent game. Nancy Lieberman expresses her gratitude for Caitlin Clark. Instead of just urging the fans, Lieberman took the lead herself. During the broadcast of the Fever vs. Dallas Wings game, the analyst had high praise for the rookie. Fully aware that her bold statement might draw criticism, Lieberman chose to speak 